In this orthoecotology case, we have a patient whose posterior treatment rings are starting to form. They're well positioned, but a little bit faint in both eyes. Not very complete, will probably improve over time. Now the patient's main complaint is glare in low light situations, and then some blur in the left eye. Here we see the lens that the patient is wearing for the left eye. There's about a diopter and a half of with the world astigmatism, mostly contained within the pupil. And in this case, we're molding out uh, just about all of it. We'll notice in the refraction, there isn't, uh, there's actually a little bit of against the real cylinders, which indicates there's a fair amount of internal astigmatism. So this is a case where we can see how uh, astigmatism that's located very close to the apex can be molded out with a spherical lens. Uh, however, in this case, we actually don't want to do that because we need the patient to retain this cylinder on the cornea so that it cancels out the cylinder that's inside the eye on the lens. If a good way to look at that is to click the over refraction box and Wave predicts about a diopter and a quarter of against the rule of astigmatism if we do sphericalize the cornea. So under corrected or sill that's now, now showing through, it can cause glare. A uh, small treatment zone can also cause glare at night. Um, if the glare is most noticeable in just the left eye, then I think there's a good chance that it's just from the astigmatism that's showing, and we can correct for that. If the glare is in both eyes, then we might want to make the lens a little bit larger and also increase the size of the treatment zone. So in order to reduce how much cylinder we're correcting, uh, what I would recommend doing is going into 50% mode and just lifting the periphery of the lens in the superior and inferior meridians. So we're going to give ourselves approximately 10 microns of clearance underneath the lens. And oftentimes a lens that fits a little bit loose in the vertical meridian will cause cylinder to be induced in the cornea. So in this case, we're not trying to induce cylinder, just correct less than we already are with the original lenses. If we also wanted to enlarge the optic zone of the lens to give ourselves a little bit larger treatment, uh, I would recommend increasing the size of the lens first, the overall diameter. It's a fairly large cornea, about 12 millimeters across, so we can probably add an entire millimeter to this lens, go all the way up to an 11.6. What was originally 6.2 and 6.8 at the OZ and IC naturally moved back when we changed the diameter. That also changes our lens thicknesses, so don't forget to reset that. And it also changed our power, because all it is is move the sizes back, but it didn't adjust for demand. So we still need to increase this. It's about one and a quarter. Let's do this at 100% mode. We do have a little bit of tericity where the power is not very even, so I'm just going to tune that up. And now we're pretty close to one and a quarter in all the meridians. We still have a lens that fits a little bit loose in the vertical and is larger with a larger OZ and IC. This should give us a larger treatment zone and hopefully along with a little bit less correction of the astigmatism on the cornea, take care of the glare that the patient's noticing. So hopefully these thoughts are helpful. Best of luck with your patient. Thanks for watching.